Shalom and welcome to today's uh, message as we treasure uh, this great and goodness of our God. So may God bless you. Uh, I want to speak about death. Death is haunting uh, everybody all over the world and especially in our country now and then. So I want to speak about the topic the wages of sin is death. And what is the meaning of death according to the English dictionary? It is the corrupt of a process or an end of something. This is not a frequently asked question, but a good test to our readiness of any possible death. So have you ever thought dying suddenly? What would be your response to that? And how ready are you? Let's ask God to help us to number our days because they are short lived. And this is according to the Bible in the book of Psalms 90 and verse number 12. And this was Moses who was telling God, so teach us to number our days that we may get us a heart of wisdom. And wisdom here, a meaning that we cannot actually do anything about our sins to stop death because we are sinners by nature. Even doing good or religious rituals cannot save us. But thankfully, we can choose to eternal life that is in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. So when you make us when we make a such a close the boat and mention the word life, it triggers a groan within many bitterness and many regrets. For most people today lives a life which describes an overload. Overload of weight of everyday life living with a feeling of overwhelmed, overworked, overcommitted, overanxious, etc., etc. Our tank or this body vessel are on empty and we are running on vapor without any solid substance because of the many overloads of the daily hassles etc etc and therefore we keep on running for weeks months maybe years and often we are running with a huge pack on our backs full of all the important things in our lives things like family career financial plans personal goals and the lists have got no end the trouble is all that of our learning is beginning to catch with us hence we are worn out and exhausted so what has brought us to a such a state that's a question we can ask ourselves it is because there is a collective sense among us that our personal lives are sprinkling out of control and as the pace of life increases we often despair of even gaining our aspirations because there is no time. And that's why Moses was earnestly asking God to give him wisdom so that he can be able to number his days. So God has warned us in the Bible about the unaccountability of life. Psalms 90 was written by Moses who lived to be 120 years old and I seriously doubt that any of us will live that long. So verse number one says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Our sacred sins in the light of your presence 
So just pass there or stop there and think about your secret sin in your life. And that's why I told you in the beginning that the wages of our sins is death. And most of us have humbled sacred sin, whatever it can we can call it. You might call it a weakness or whatever you might call it. So Moses was talking to God and he was telling God and he wanted to expose his sacred sins into the light of his presence. And then verse number 9 says in Psalms 90, because all our days decline in your anger, we finish our years with fatigue. You see, because we are learning after wind and we are so empty, and one thing is required of the Lord. The Bible says that we take all our heavy laden burdens onto Him at Calvary because it is only there we can find freedom. Because as we continue, even in our sacred sin, the anger of God continues to grow in our lives and our ears become so tired. Verse number 10 says, For the length of our days is 70 years, or 80, if you are strong. Yet their pride is but labor and sorrowful. For they quickly pass and we fly away. Verse number 11, Who knows the power of your anger? Your wrath matches the fear you are due. So teach us to number our days. Verse number 12, that we may present our hearts on wisdom. Overload is a reality. Just another way to say overwhelmed or tired. Does that make sense with a straight line between two points of a curve in your life? Most of us are tired because of the heavy luggage we have carried in our lives. And if there is one term that describes the life of most people today, it is overload. The mere mention of the word overload triggers a groaning within us. Many of us are living with a groan, pain and bitterness. And no wonder Moses, because of the heavy burden he had, he lived in a lot of bitterness and it is from that bitterness that he was unable to see Canaan land because he increased the anger of God and God declared that he shall not see the Canaan land. So, so because this overload has triggered a groaning within us, overload remains as of the weight of every day life. We feel overwhelmed, overworked, overcommitted, over anxious, over matched and over tended. Our tank are on empty and we are running on vapor. Most people are running on vapor because there is no life in them. And may God help each one of us. And that's no wonder why Jesus said we just love him with our mouth, but our hearts are far from him. And we are just like a tomb which has been decorated and painted white. But inside there is nothing apart from bones. May God help each one of us. We are living at a time when it can be very easy to be overtaken by anxiety and all these things I've mentioned, the overloads of life. So Moses reminds us that life is so short and then we die or fly away. So he asked God to teach us to number our days. So how do we number our days? 
I believe one of the way to number your days is to realize if you don't plan your schedule, somebody else will plan for you. The devil is ready to plan for you, even to dimension. But may God be gracious to each one of us. This means that when we set, we should set our priorities based on what is truly important. For example, our relationship with God is crucial. And that is according to Psalms 62 verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, I wait quietly before God, for my salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, where I will never be shaken. It is only Christ, the solid ground where we can stand. Every other ground is sinking. Even as we can transit on every day, if we account for every day, we see that there are so many burdens and things to bring us down apart from Christ. And that's why the psalmist said, I waited quietly before God, for my salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, where I shall never be shaken. Jesus, who was God in flesh, died for our sins and offered the gift of eternal life through faith in Him. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. Yes, this life is like vapor. It is frying away. But I thank God because there is hope beyond the grave if we trust in Jesus Christ who died for our sins in the name of the Lord. And another priority should be our relationship with others. Family members, friends, co-workers and neighbors. We cannot do everything so we should use the time we have carefree with the relationships. How do you relate with the people? And I thank God in the golden command. Jesus said that you love the Lord with all your heart, with all your strength. And second to that is you love your neighbor. This talks about relationships with people. Because people are the best resource God has given us. Not money, not anything else. And that's why you see politician learning for people like nobody's business because they know people are the best results, the resources. For some of us, this means we need to learn to say no to so many engagement, slow down and then think twice. So now we should think twice. What kind of a people are we relating with? There is a peer pressure in every age group and birds of the same feather flocks together. So if we don't manage our relationships, we waste time for nothing, and we are unable to account for the time. We cannot do everything, so that, so what must we do? Do what is important first, trusting God to help us accomplish more than we could apart from Him. May God help us to understand what I'm saying. Because life is too short for each one of us. And you, sh you find yourself, is like you have done nothing. And the years are passing and they are coming to pass. So may we prioritize to engage ourselves with the best relationship, Jesus Christ. Because our relationship with Jesus Christ, he's called Emmanuel, God with us. He's the only person who cannot leave you, nor forsake you. And I wonder, why should we speak so much about salvation while you know that you need God? And as you need God, you know, you have to make relationships with the people whom you want to deal with, whether it is in business quarters, whether it is any other dealing, you need people and you need to make a good relationship with them. So it is the same. We make good relationship with our God in this last days because he's the only person 
who can be able to save us from these unpredictable issues which are happening daily. Deaths are all over. You go through the social media, through the media, through the radios and the TV. They are all over. But may God help us even as we give our life to our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of humanity in the name of the Lord. In the book of Isaiah chapter number 30 and verse number 18, the Bible encouraged us with this word. The Lord is still waiting for you to come to him so he can show you his love and compassionate. So the Lord, you might be waiting for God. Unajua kuna watu wengine wanasema kuja na usitumane. Unajua Mungu sio binadamu. Na na pande ile nyingine naye Mungu anakugoja. God is waiting on you. So can we draw closer to God? When we draw closer to him, the Bible says we shall find him. And those who seek him finds him. So can we draw closer to him and we engage him and see what life becomes in the name of the Lord. For the Lord is a faithful God and blessed are those who wait for him to help them. He is the closest help for each one of us. So can we humble ourselves and come to God because God is still waiting for us. Maybe you have taken a long time to wait for him, but God is waiting for you as you go to him. The Bible says, call unto me, and I shall reveal you great. And those sacred things which has been hidden, there is a lot of treasure which has been hidden. And it belongs to us. And it is unless we go to him, because the God of this age has blinded the eyes of many people. Many people are blind, even though they are opening their eyes and you can see the look on their face. But they are blind because there is a lot of pressure. So when we go to the light of the gospel, it opens our eyes and then we become a people uh, to see those things which other peoples are not seeing in the name of the Lord. So may God continue to bless you as you continue to meditate upon this teaching because the wages of sin is death. And may God help us. And it is my prayer that Lord teach us to number our days. All right? That we may gain a heart of wisdom. So it is my prayer that I may learn more about God and know him. Paul said he has not yet known. And this is a man who had life encounters with God. But he said, I still need to know him even more. So we need to know him more than we can anticipate. And so that he shall give us and give us a direction. He is the way, the truth a life for each one of us. So may God bless you, even as you continue to think, and as you continue to add on your wisdom, value, as you continue to add on value, you add a good character, as you manage yourself, even as you manage time, and you prioritize what is required on these last days. We are living at days which are very sickly, ni kama siku zi, ni kama siku zimegonjeka kwa sababu ya zile shida zina tufuata na zimetuzingira but when we trust in God he is the only solid foundation we can stand on in the name of Jesus Christ the bible says those who build a city without God it is in vain those who work and they they wake up very early in the morning and sleep late even without eating, uh, having a good time to rest and eat. They are doing it, it is in vain. So may God help us uh, to seek his presence that we can live better and we can receive that protection 
which is needed at a time like this in the name of Jesus. You are blessed even as you continue to watch our program Neno Rapsara. You can subscribe so that it shall always notify you anytime uh, it is on the air in the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed in the name of the Lord. I would like us to pray even as we continue to prioritize which is important to us even as we ask God to help us to, to be able uh, to number our days that we can have, uh, we can do what we are supposed to do and we don't waste much time on air and vapor in the name of the Lord. So everlasting Father in the name of Jesus, this morning Lord, I come to you. Lord, I know there are so many people who are living in desperate, in fear, in anxiety, overloads of so many issues of life, families, relationship and finances but Lord Jesus this word has come at a time Lord when we need to understand how to number our days and then once we understand we know how to, uh, to number our days we shall become accountable to you and Lord we shall have a rest in the name of the Lord I'm speaking peace to every person who is listening to me across the world that you are sufficient grace may be enough for each one of us. Lord, we thank you and I bless you. There are those people who are sick and they are groaning within themselves. Lord, I declare and declare that their healing, may, may, may they be caught up in their healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Everlasting King, I thank you. Even as I pray for our country, yes, economically, or politically, everlasting God, administratively, Yes, as I remember, the three bodies, the executive, the legislature, yes, King Jehovah, even as I remember the judiciary in the name of Jesus Christ. How I remember the armed forces in Jesus' name. Everlasting King, how I thank you, even as I pray for families all over this country, that Lord, you are going to usher your presence, that they may live with an economy uh, from above. Yes, the children of Israel lived with, in 40 years with an economy which nobody understood apart from God because he was the provider. Lord, I thank you. Those who are in lack, may you provide what they need in the name of Jesus Christ. Everlasting King, I thank you. Even as we continue to wait upon you, Lord, I cover your people with the blood of Jesus. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, in every home. Yes, I thank you that Jehovah King, you shall uh, continue to, to, to become the fortress and uh, the refuge of your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Where there is a lot of anxiety, Lord Jesus, may you give joy to your people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Maybe you are there and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior. And through the preaching, you have just gotten convinced that it's a good time to give your life to Jesus. I would like to pray with you. So can you repeat this word after me? Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today. Yes, that your grace which is all sufficient, may embrace all my life. I come to you with repentance and humility. Forgive me my sins. I've been a sinner, but today I come to that blood which was poured at Golgotha, at Calvary, that I may receive salvation. Because all those who come to you, you give them power to become your sons and daughters. Everlasting God, I thank you. Even Lord, I continue to believe in you. May you pour your Holy Spirit upon my life that I, I shall be able to stand the storms of the day. Lord, I thank you and I bless you. Write my name in the eternal book of life and remove it from the book of death. Lord, I thank you, even as I bless you, in Jesus' name. Yes, I'll advise you to go to a church where you can grow and mature, that you can become 
as somebody who shall be able to stand in this knowledge of the gospel. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are blessed. Shalom, shalom, and may God see you through in this end time phenomena when there are so many things to bring fatigue upon our life. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Umebarikiwa, mungu wa kubariki katika jina laizu. Amen and amen.